On the second video from section 8.4, quadratic functions and their graphs, is going to go ahead and look at graphing a quadratic uh, equation when it is in its standard form. So the standard form would look something along the lines of f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. So this is different than vertex form. It's the same equation. Again, it's just presented in a different format. So we're going to go ahead and investigate how to uh, graph it when it is in this format. So in this case, let's take a look at the following example. Um, I'm going to look at f of x is equal to 4x squared minus 12x plus 9. So the main thing that you always want to have uh, in your back pocket, and what actually was so nice about the vertex form, was the fact that you had the vertex clearly laid out. And in this situation, the vertex is actually kind of buried. You can't easily look at, say, the coefficients, for example, and say, this is how I get my, my vertex. You have to do a little bit more calculation. So in order to find the vertex, we have to kind of first find the x value of the vertex and then the y value for the, for the vertex. In order to find the x value, uh, recall from class that we have x is equal to negative b over 2a. And it's not coincidence that you see the negative b over 2a here. It's also a part of your quadratic formula that you were working with in section 8.2. So what we want to do is we want to identify b and we want to identify a. And again, this is it's imperative or it's preferred. That's why you want to make sure that your quadratic function is presented in descending order. So in this case, I know that my b is negative 12 and my a is 4. So this gives me a positive 12 over 8, um, which now will simplify to 3 halves. Oh darn, it's a fraction. So first off, don't panic. And um, second off, we have the x value for our vertex. So I'm going to note here, my vertex is going to have a 3 halves in the x coordinate position. How do I find my y? Well, if I know what the x value is, I can go ahead and plug the x value into the function that I'm working with, and I can evaluate it. If I am able to simplify the right-hand side in this case, I can then reveal what my y value is equal to. So when I go ahead and I evaluate, 3 halves squared would give me uh, 9 over 4 minus 12 halves, or sorry, 12 over 1 essentially times 3 halves. So what happens here is that the 2 will cancel out and leave me with the 12 reducing to a 6. And this would give me 18 plus 9. Note here that the 4 we can write as 4 over 1 so that the 4 in the numerator and the 4 in the denominator will cancel. So this now gives me y is equal to 9 minus 18 plus 9 which simplifies to 0. So my vertex is 3 halves, 0. Also note, take a look at the 4. Okay, recall that from like the first video we had talked about with if a were negative, then the parabola opens down, and if a is positive, um, then the parabola opens upward. It's the same rules, so whether you're in standard form or vertex form, you would look at your lead coefficient and see if it is positive or negative. In this case, our a, or in this case our 4, is positive. So this means that our parabola is going to open upward. Okay. So, so far, here is what we have for our graph. Bear with me while I sketch out a coordinate plane. Okay, so if we're going to plot our vertex, it's 3 halves, or if you've already moved to your calculator, you can probably say it's 1 and a half. Um, some of you may be asking, can I immediately convert this to a decimal because I'm more comfortable working with a decimal? My answer to that is yes in this case because your fraction terminates. It's definitely done with. Um, if your vertex started off at a 1 third or a 2 thirds, so any fraction where 
it continually repeats on, I would prefer that you work with it in um, its fraction form because this way you're not tempted to round anything and therefore lose your accuracy in the middle of your calculation. So with three halves, three halves zero, that's about here, okay? And we know that things are going to open up. Um, but what I also want to note here is that I'm going to sketch in my dotted line, which is my axis of symmetry, okay? So notice here that I don't have any sort of y-intercept. So maybe it's going to work out for me to find my y-intercept. So I'm going to go ahead and do that in red. So recall that your y-intercept has the following format as a coordinate point, 0 and y. And we are going to go ahead and everywhere that we see x, we are going to replace it with 0. And we like to find the y-intercept because it's such a quick calculation. Um, 0 squared is 0, 4 times 0 is 0, so that's going to go away. Negative 12 times 0, that goes away. So actually, I'm left with y is equal to 9, or in other words, I'm left with a y-intercept of 0, 9. So I just need one more tick mark. So I have 0, 9 right here. So note that this is basically, um, since it's symmetric, I can basically come over here. So if I went one and a half spaces to, I'm going to highlight this in um, a yellow. So I went one and a half spaces to the left, and then I went up nine. So I can do the same thing here. I'm going to go one and a half spaces to the left, and I'm going, or sorry, to the right, and I'm going to go up nine. And there is that symmetrical point, because remember, a parabola is symmetrical. And now I'm able to sketch my parabola. Some of you might be wondering, well, what about the x-intercept? And you could find it if you wanted. Um, I'm going to scoot this down so that I can show you what will happen, because sometimes finding the x-intercept doesn't always go um, your way. Okay. Um, well, actually, we, we did find the x-intercept. It's, it's right here. So we would probably hope to find um, two x-intercepts, but this is one of those situations that I discussed with you in class where the vertex is actually sitting right on top of the x-axis. So we can't really find the x-intercept in this case. Um, I will do another example uh, that discusses that. Also, note for your vertex here, this is going to be known as your minimum on your parabola because it is the lowest point on the parabola. The graph isn't going to go beyond that point, so it actually does hit its lowest value there. Um, so we will go ahead and we will leave that, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at a completely different example. I'm going to take a look at the following function. f of x is equal to negative 6x squared minus 12x minus 8. So again, we would want to check and say, well, um, this lead coefficient of negative 6, that's going to tell me that it's going to open downward because the lead coefficient is negative. I also can say that I want to find um, the vertex. So again, we have a trusty formula to help us get going on that. So x is going to be equal to negative b over 2a, and again, that x is going to represent the x value in your vertex. So it just so happens that in this example, our b is also negative 12, and our a this time will be negative 6. So if we clean this up, this gives me a positive 12 over a negative 12, which will simplify to a negative 1. So my vertex will have an x value of negative 1. Okay, so that's where that value went. So again, at this point, you shouldn't panic and kind of go, oh, oh crap, I only have the x value. How do I find the y? The good news is once you have the x value, it makes finding the y value um, really, really easy. So we're going to go ahead and anywhere that I see an x, I'm going to drop that negative 1 in. So I'm doing a substitution. And I'm going to go ahead and evaluate to reveal what y should be equal to. 
So negative 1 squared is going to be positive 1. Negative 12 times negative 1 gives me positive 12 minus 8. Uh, negative 6 times 1 gives you negative 6 plus 12 minus 8. This simplifies down to negative 2. So there is the y value for our vertex. Okay. So the next thing, uh, a safe bet, is to always try and see if you can find the y-intercept if that's possible. Okay, assuming that your parabola doesn't actually, the vertex of your parabola isn't sitting on the, as a y-intercept as well, like the one uh, that we had looked at in the previous video. So in this situation, in order to find the y-intercept, remember that it is going to have this format for its coordinate point. We will simply say, if I want to find the y-intercept, I'm going to plug 0 in for all of my x values. Again, because that's what our coordinate point says. Our x value must be 0. So we're going to go ahead and clean this up. And again, love doing y-intercepts because they are such quick calculations. Um, these will cross out because 0 squared is 0 times negative 6 is also 0. Negative 12 times 0 gives you 0. So this leaves you with a negative 8. So our y-intercept is going to be at 0, negative 8. So let's go ahead and see what we have thus far. Okay, and again, bear with me. Go to the bathroom, get a drink of water, something like that while I go ahead and draw out this coordinate plane. Okay, so our vertex we said was at negative 1, negative 2, so we're located right here for my vertex. My y-intercept is going to be at 0, negative 8. So 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay. So you might be thinking, great, I'm close, but I don't have enough information in order to make a parabola here. And I would counter and say, you do. Um, I would go ahead and draw your axis of symmetry, because again, remember that parabolas are symmetric. We can fold them in half, and the points that we uh, fold over, they should touch each other. So notice that in this case, uh, if I'm one space away here from the axis of symmetry to my point. So that means that in order to maintain symmetry, I can go just one more space over. Okay, so I'm creating that mirror image. And there is my parabola. Is it opening down? Yes. Is the vertex going to, is the vertex at negative 1, negative 2? Mm-hmm. Um, is the y-intercept at 0, negative 8? Yes. And like I said, because of the axis of symmetry that we have here, if we go, um, if we want to make sure that we, we use the axis of symmetry in order to mirror that point. Also, uh, what I want you to know here is because the parabola is turned downward, our vertex has become the maximum in this case. And again, this is because the parabola is opening downward. Um, the arrows indicate that it's going to continue to go down uh, indefinitely. So really, the vertex is the highest point this parabola is going to experience. Okay. So this was just a quick crash course on how to graph uh, functions. Um, I will go ahead and actually let you know. So notice, uh, just to kind of extend our learning here, because I know how much you all love extended learning. Um, let's talk about the fact that there are no x-intercepts. Okay, We had discussed this in class. Notice that this uh, parabola is not crossing the x-axis at all. In fact, it's completely going away from it. So if you tried to find x-intercepts, uh, we would simply use our quadratic formula to help us out with that. In this case, our a, our b, and our c, and if you've been following around, along, you already have them written down. a is negative 6, b is negative 12, and c is uh, negative 8. So if we were to find our x-intercepts, we would say, well, we have negative 
negative 12 plus or minus square root of negative 12 squared minus 4 times negative 6 times negative 8 all over 2 times negative 6. If we clean this up, a negative negative 12 is a positive 12 plus or minus square root of negative 12 squared will give me 144 and negative 4 times negative 6 times negative 8 results in a negative 192. This is going to be all over a 2 times negative 6 or a negative 12. If we continue to clean this up, we have 12 plus or minus the square root of negative 48 all over negative 12. And here is actually where the issue is. Notice what I have underneath the radical sign. I have a negative and that's not possible. Or in this case, we our way around it would be to remove the negative from the root. And we know that we would have an I in our solution. Well, can you find an imaginary number on your X axis? And most of you are probably telling yourselves no, or at least silently shaking your head at the screen. Um, and you're right. And so that's why we don't have any X intercepts here. It's, it all boils down to the fact that I have an imaginary number. My x-intercepts are imaginary numbers and therefore don't exist on the x-axis. So this just kind of goes hand in hand. If you have a parabola that's not touching the x-axis uh, at all, it means that your x-intercepts are imaginary. If you um, are going ahead and finding the x-intercepts first and you find that you have an imaginary number, then you'll know that your parabola will not touch the x-axis at all. So I know this video was a little bit longer. Uh, I hope that it was helpful though. If you do have any questions, please let me know.